Let's reconvene the meeting, gentlemen, if we can. Um, this, the purpose of this afternoon's meeting is, is, a, is a look at our planning objectives for the, I guess, the immediate future as well as far as we want to go, and look at uh, what we can do within the budget considerations we have to have to have to work with. And the way I'd like to do this, uh, if it's okay with with the rest of you, is to have um, maybe start with uh, start with Fred and let him let's work our way around as far as some things you'd like to see happen and how we how we get there. Uh, and we don't have to make a decision on them right now. We'll get everybody's information and kind of make our own mental notes as which ones we think are, are higher priority and then go from there as far as addressing them for Peter's benefit so he has basic planning objectives he can use for budget purposes. Not just for this year, but two or three years down the road. And further if we feel necessary. Um, well, what comes top of mind is our infrastructure, primarily our streets, roads. Um, they need to be I think this has been an ongoing issue for, for quite a while and will continue to be because we've got a long ways to go and the rate we're going, we're going fairly slow because of uh, budget constraints. I think we're limited what, around 500K a year. Uh, that doesn't get us a whole lot each year, so I, I would think we should put more uh, emphasis on, on infrastructure type repairs and probably increase our budget and see if we can move at a little faster pace because it's going to take us a long time to get where we need to get. And to me, I, I think that's a priority and that impacts everybody in the town. Excuse me. We're, we're If not, turn your speaker on. Please turn your speaker on. They give me one back, Gary. <laughs> right now, we're at 516,000 people. Is that our target? Or is it five? That, that's the amount that um, is on record as a policy. Of course, council changes that occasionally, depending on the budget year. But that's how much I would, have, I would uh, propose based on the current policy. I thought we increased that last year. You did for last year. If you want to increase it this year, y'all can do that. And it's a policy on the books currently for to do it each year at, at the three cent revenue neutral. And if y'all want to increase that, you can or decrease it. That's, uh, I guess that's uh, what's a priority for me as we go around and get more engaging. I'm sure I'll think of others as well, but that okay. one to me is the most That's a good start. That's a good start. Gary, you have something you want to address? You, know you want me next? If, you don't, if, you, if you're okay um, with it. I would, yeah. I was looking at that. Um, and I talked to Bonnie when we were at that last meeting, and I guess we've got, what, 3% for capital spending right now that's designated, and I would recommend or think we should look at increasing that each year, which would You're talking about spending for the capital spending. projects. Capital projects. Um, one thing you might need to have you guys put on your, I've, I've noticed the walk path coming up, the beach road's going to have to be it's got some issues. We're going to have to start repairing our things before they totally break down. There's some cracking and uh, that kind of thing that's happening now. It's going to get worse over time. I'm sure that's due to the uh, freeze that we had. You know, it gets the water down in those cracks and then it raises it up. So we need to start looking at maintenance on our, our infrastructure other than the roads. Are you talking about the asphalt walking path? Yeah. Okay. The one coming right down the speech road. Okay. And uh, I think that was a deal two project, wasn't it? No, that's ours. Uh, we, we maintain it. Okay. I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah. Um, another thing, we put away money and capital for canals. I would suggest we start adding for beach nourishment and planning for that, looking out to do that. The other thing, 
that I've noticed since we did the nourishment, um, anybody that's been down to the Black Pelican and rode the beach road back this way, Kitty Hawk sand fence is totally covered right now. So they got a new dune based on wind. And hopefully that'll hold up over time. Uh, so I would suggest that we kind of start looking at using our money to sand fence all the way down our beach, not just sections, and planning. Because I saw some planning in front of a couple of spots down in Kill Devil Hills and then here in Kitty Hawk. Uh, that helps maintain that dune. So, you know, being proactive on that beach side would be a, an important thing to me. Uh, that give you a start? Yeah, gives me a start. Chris? Um, I had two things. I'm going to second what okay, sounds like what both of you may have said relating to the paths. Um, I, I, it's been something that I've cared about from the beginning, and we've got some grants to do a little bit coming up here, but I think we need to also think bigger picture. Um, the rest of dogwood uh, um, is a bit dangerous, a lot dangerous, but then it's not just dogwood. Um, I, I know in the past there's been a comprehensive plan done for the town, and I'd like to try to bring that back um, and look at how we get around without our cars. Because one, one thing that we hear a lot about is I can't do anything when people check in. And if you can ride, the, ride your bike to the supermarket from, you know, right now in Chickahawk, we can do that. My daughter will go, she'll pick up something. And she can go do that, but not everybody can do that. They can't ride their bikes. Um, and in fact, on a Saturday and Sunday, it's, it's a faster way to get to duck, riding your bike, than it is, or even walking. For yeah, I was getting um, ready to interject that. So I, I think that's, I, I think it, it's worth spending, I don't think we have to do everything in this one year, and maybe it's a multi-year thing, but let's, let's put out a, a really good plan for the long term, and let's, let's come up with a comprehensive plan for that, or revive an old one. I know there was one that was done in the past, Let's evaluate it as this new group and see if we like it or what we want to change. Um, so that would be that would be my one of my priorities. Uh, the other priority that I would put out there is that all, a lot of the other towns are looking to simplify and streamline their permitting process. Now we're fortunate in our town that West does a really good job of getting these permits in and out. But the move that's happening now is it's all going digital. Like, there's no reason to submit, kill tons of trees and submit paper that's just going to get filed away and, or thrown out. So, um, Currituck has done a really good job of doing digital submissions, send PDFs in. That doesn't mean that you might not have a small set that, that Wes might look at or that you might need to be able to print. But, um, and an Ag's head's looking at it, and I think that it, we need to get ahead of the curve on this, and I, I think it's worth expending some resources to do it so that we have records of these homes over time because it's a paper's disposable, but paper's gonna go away. If we could go back and look at what's been permitted over time. Um, also, um, residents want that too. Oftentimes you'll get a second resident of a home. They don't know what the plans were. They never did them, it was somebody else. They purchased the home from somebody else. Maybe it's four people down the line. It'd be good to have a record of that and public safety and everything else too. So. Um, that doesn't mean we go back and digitize, but at least we make an effort that everything we come in is in a digital format. Yeah, I, yeah. I get it. No, I mean, it's, it's a little thing, but and I, I'm not totally anti-paper, but... No, I'm saying give us a, use a laptop or... Uh, that's another way, that's a good Instead of this. Yeah, I mean, we could look at, or even just a, um, just a iPad. An iPad. I mean, that's, that's why I bring mine. I don't need this. The, um, well, like town, of, like, town of Duck had it where, a few years ago, we had to submit for the plan, for the town council 10 full-size copies of plans. I mean, you had to stack this big of plans. Complete waste of money. And we even said, what do you say we just buy the town council iPads at that point? Because it was just the same, it was the same amount of money by the time you were all done. And, and they didn't even, you know, and, and so that sort of thing. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get rid of this stuff. Becomes, I don't need it. That becomes valuable. Even if, you know, anyways, that was my thing. Town of Duck has, each of the council members up there has a computer in front of them. Yeah, that's a newer thing, yeah. It's good. <clears throat> Jim, you're, you're the next if you want to make, say a few words. I've got a few. Um, some of these may fall under uh, capital improvements, but 
One of my top priorities, I think, is uh, walkways. Um, I agree with Mr. Nason where he says, you know, let's look at that comprehensive um, walkway plan and try and figure out something over the years. But I think more immediately, we could go ahead and get started or should go ahead and get started on that one from NC-12 up to the Three Dog T. That, without going into all that story, I think that should be a priority for us. There's also, of course, the firehouse. Um, and I agree on the beach, what Mr. McDonald was saying about the, uh, the beaches um, being proactive on that. Now, I know that in the past, the town has been proactive on installing sand fencing and planting the grasses and everything. And what you described down in Kitty Hawk, I've seen in parts of the recently renourished section of Southern Shores that that sand fencing is definitely working. Um, canal dredging is something that, of course, we need to be looking at long term. The same with bulkheads. Um, but to me, uh, so much of this comes back down to just getting some walkways right now. There are certainly other long-term planning needs and all, but that's pretty much it. Thank you, Jim. Um, shorter term, um, I, I think Peter and I have talked about this in some 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 extent. We we we, knew, we have a, a limited number of properties uh, at Center Town Hall, the police station, et cetera, the public works building. We don't know what kind of shape those facilities are in. We, we, we've never done a facilities assessment on, on the property by a professional and come in and look at them and say, hey, you need to do this or that or the other thing. And let, let Peter uh, coordinate that, monitor it, and get the, get the information back to us as far as what the cost might be. Now, that's just one thing. That, that, so, so looking at what we already own and how we, how we maintain, how we, how we take care of it is critical. Um, I, I like the idea of working with, the bike pay, with, the, with walking paths, bike paths. We did a bike and pedestrian plan about three years ago, four, three and a half years ago now. We had 16 or 18 people on a committee plus a facilitator and, and of course Wes was there. Um, it fell by the way, we didn't pursue it at all. It came to council as, a, as a, just a presentation to us. We didn't take any action. I don't know where it stands right now, um, whether, it, whether it's something that we could revisit that, that plan or whether we kind of take parts of that plan and implement them. But, one thing we sh could do for sure, which shouldn't be too costly, would be to come up with a map showing recommended walking and bi bike routes, kind of like the Civic Association has their map of the, all the streets. Uh, so people, people who came here as visitors or even residents can look at that map and say, I can get to the shopping center by taking this road, that road, and this road, and this trail. Um, I would think that's something we could do internally, uh, and even do some signage for that matter. Put up signs saying this is, you know, this way to to the food line or whatever street they're going to be, to be traveling on. So I, I would suggest we do that if we, if, we don't, if we don't reintroduce the bike and pedestrian path, at least, at least we come up with some kind of a map of the, of the, of the path we'd recommend and, of, and some signage for them. Um, no left turn on from Highway 158 on to, on to South Dogwood. Um, don't know where that, I think, I think I think we don't we plan, Peter, or didn't you, didn't you say we plan to go ahead and try to implement mid-June or something? Is it on a trial basis? Um, yes, the, count, the last discussion I had with, with the council was to uh, receive direction to go ahead and do that at some weekend in June. Um, we did not account for the money at that time. I reported that we would have to come back and ask for a budget amendment before the end of the year to implement that. And the cost would be, um, the uh, signage company, as well as the overtime for the law enforcement and public works. Um, that's where we left it. And we're ready to do that in June. I, I have no, I mean, my idea would be to wait until the school system is, school systems are out before you could get a re good read on a trial weekend, but it's up to the council as to when you want to direct that be done. Um, so we're still on there. I mean, we're still looking at day to day, trying to right. consider any other alternatives to that, including looking at some of the 
cities on the news now nationwide are experiencing the same problem. But that's where we left it. Um, we're ready to do that in, in uh, June at some point in time. We just we would need to get the money straight for it as well, the funding for it. Right, right. So that's, that's something on my list. Um, Yeah, uh, another one that's, that's, that maybe is, is kind of a distant thing to be, be talking about, but we have we had a situation this past uh, year with her, with Hermine and, and uh, Matthew back to back, where we had sig significant flooding uh, on our avenues, throughout our avenues, and even on high, on on uh, as far down as as, as uh, Hickory, and all the way up to past past Twelfth, Thirteenth Street. Um, there. There may be no way to resolve that, uh, that the fact that we, they flood there, but we do have a series of ponds there, interconnected ponds that belong to the Civic Association. There may be a possibility with, with getting, hiring a consultant and bringing someone to advise us so we can maybe could perhaps uh, dredge those individual ponds and give them a greater capacity for handling water, which might either decrease or completely eliminate that flooding problem in a, in a, in a say, a 10-inch rainfall. We don't know that, but we, it was going to be something worth looking into, it, depending on the cost. So we, once again, have to direct Peter to bring somebody in as a, as a consultant, I guess, and, and do some, do some legwork for us. I mean, if, if, you, if you want to do that, we can just ask Peter to determine the cost and go from there and make a decision after the cost are determined. Um, We mentioned, uh, we mentioned controlling the traffic turning on, on South Dogwood, uh, and we talked about paths on East Dogwood, and I'm not opposed to that, of course. Um, but the, the elephant in the room is South Dogwood. We've got, we've got a street there that really isn't a very safe street. Um, I get more complaints, of all the complaints I get, I get more about South Dogwood and the safety of it than anything, than anything else in town. I don't know what the rest of you hear. I don't hear a lot of complaining, but I do get that. It's, it's, I, I don't feel comfortable passing somebody on that street. I, I have to pull over and slow down or, you know, pretty much get off the road if I'm a, as far as I can if I'm passing a UPS truck or a, a service vehicle. Do, do we want to address in any way the, the, the South Dogwood issue or we just want to kind of keep pushing it aside? You and I, I talked about that, and you know how I feel. I think we should do that South Dogwood up to the bridge First, do what? Some type of path. The cemetery to the bridge? No, 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 no. From the the bridge down to uh, the intersection of East Dogwood. That would be the least. Uh, it would be yeah. the most need with the least uh, yeah. intrusion that, on that, property. That doesn't address the condition of the street, though. Well, that's on capital. Improve, uh, on the capital committee to recommend Dogwood be stepped up. Which, which part of Dogwood do you think is more critical? Uh, I'm talking about critical from Worcester Bridge High, Tall Pine, Bridge. Tall Pine Bridge down to the stop sign. Oh, this to the, to the north to the three 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 from, three from Tall Pine to the north to the, north, to the stop to the sign. Too, okay. Well. Yeah. I'm talking about, okay, that section is more dangerous than East Dogwood because once you get past the stop sign and the bridge on East Dogwood, you've got room to get off the road. You've got, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just saying, we can't yeah, do yeah, it all. Yeah. If we can't do it all. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when you get, once you get up to Hillcrest, you got plenty of room mm -hmm. to walk down to the beach. Mm -hmm. But that section, and I'm, I'm Look, the most critical section is the cemetery down to Tall Pine. Yes. Agree. Don't disagree with anybody. Yes. But the most costly is the cemetery to the Tall Pine Bridge because when you get through the landscape there, you've got a drop here, a raise here, a drop there. You're going to have to look at. I talked to Tom about this, and what I, you know, one of the suggestions I'd say would be pave that road add a walk path on the edge as best we can. Not ideal, but probably the most cost effective. What you're calling, what you're talk, call, talk, calling for is what they call a shared trail. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but that's the most, I, I will agree with anybody in here, that's probably the most critical area. 
but because of the ups and downs, sure. it's going to be the most costly. But if you come past that tall pine, there's a lot of kids who live from there north to the stop sign and go out to the, to the beach, our kids. And yes, it's going to be intrusive on some people and they're not going to be happy. I, I mean, there's, when you get right there in that one section, their front yards and their houses are probably from here to that wall. Down around Yopon, it's very close there. Yeah, it's very close. But to me, you know, it's like the gentleman was in here when we were talking about the bike path, and he said, well, you know, I don't know why you're doing that section over on, on East Dogwood. He said, that's the safest place. I walk all the time. I ride my bike. He said, but that, you know, South Dogwood is the issue. We all agree on that, I think. So I would advocate that we do Tall Pine Down. Uh, we're going to have, have to sell it. I can tell you that because it's right on people's property. You're talking and about Tall Pine North or Tall Pine Down? Tall Pine down to the north at the stop sign. Okay, that's north at the stop sign. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, but I, but I think if, if it's a priority, and maybe it is and maybe it isn't, I, I'm in agreement with what you're saying. I say you just continue it to the beach because the other portion is well, quite a bit cheaper. If It's if not you, as expensive. Cause and we're, we're and I didn't say you don't. I yeah, just yeah. said, you know, if you got a section that you can do, that's probably more critical. That's more yeah. critical than the East Dogwood. No, no, and, and, and then you just extend that on out if you want to do that. Yeah. But before that, I would think we would go back and do the rest of South Dogwood up from the cemetery down. I think my main focus is, is on getting started, whether we did yeah. South Dogwood, East Dogwood, or whatever. But what my current line of thinking is right now is, is that if we did the walkway along East Dogwood, then we could be designing and planning that section on South Dogwood in conjunction with any road repairs and everything that may be entailed also. Well, uh, and, I, and again, I'm not trying to argue. You're right. Or one no, or I'm not other, arguing with you, Jim. But my understanding is, Peter, are we not, or is they're not looking at doing the design on that? I thought we had the design on the South Dogwood coming. We got the design. Well, no, we were, we were waiting to see what council's direction was on South Dogwood. Now, East Dogwood has been finished waiting for direction whether to move ahead with bidding on that or not. But okay. South Dogwood, we can go ahead and get them to do if council wants to Are do that. Are you talking about the path or the path and the road? The path. The path. No, just, just the path. path. Just, just the path. path. I mean, just the path. Be, right, just the path. Not designed that. I, I will we say, them, but we 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 passed that. If you go back in the minutes, we said do a design on all of that. Yeah, we we appropriated, we appropriated that. He made he made. I'd, I'd have to check with the engineer and maybe right. I just not I can't recall I was, that immediately. When, and I and and I'm not arguing the point, but the thing is, when we brought in East Dogwood, I was kind of upset that we started there. Just to be honest, when who brought in East Dogwood? When the engineer brought in East Dogwood, I thought we were going to do South Dogwood first because it was more critical. But we appropriated my remember it says that we said design that path all the way, all the way to. I, I'm, I'm all in favor. I mean, I'd say go ocean to cemetery, yeah, and then yeah. design it. And then if, if we haven't done it, we could do it. I don't I mean we could we approved it. Yeah, do you, do you design it after? based on, on the rebuild of a street, or do you design it based on not rebuilding the street? Because it, it could very, like Gary said, it could very easily be incorporated into a shared trail from the cemetery north to the, to the all the way to the intersection, if you wanted to, where, you, where it became a part of the street. Mm. I see some of those, the road, you know, that the way you described it with an extension of the road out a little further to serve as a walkway, certainly on some parts of that. Now, ideally, it would be separate, but there are some parts of South Dogwood that you're... You may have to have a boardwalk on some parts. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know what I mean? A raised... And that's why, and again, my argument may be flawed here, but that's why I think I'm getting started on the East Dogwood part or some other section while we're working through those engineering and design issues on South Dogwood, it, it would be kind of like multi-phasing from, you know, NC-12 all the way out to this, down to the school. You know, it's going to take a few years anyway. 
But if we could get the engineers to turn around a uh, design quick enough where we can do south dogwood, mm -hmm. uh, I think that is the most critical one for, you know, pedestrian safety. Well, there's far as fewer people than, than east dogwood as far as people coming up from to go to the beach off Bayberry, Holly, yeah, I mean, beach trees. And so forth. Well, that, that's critical for those, but for the residents in town, I've had countless people tell me that they'd like to see a walkway down South Dogwood so that they could let their kids ride their bike to school. Yeah, yeah. I have to. Right? Well, and, and it's easy. That's the easy one. I'm not arguing that, Jim. No, I'm, no, my no. attitude just, is, I'm my attitude is, my that's in progress. What's in progress? Though? East Dogwood. Yeah. We yeah. got a grant. We got a design. What Go with need, it. What do we need to do? We could start on that tomorrow, basically. There you go. Now. But that other section needs to be added in as quickly as possible. Okay. Before we I think jump we're on, in agreement before, there. Before <laughs> yeah. we jump on East Dogwood, we've got we've got a grant for it. Have we budgeted it? We asked Peter to put money in the budget to build that path. I don't think we have, have we? We, we, we hadn't gotten to the budget yet, so we, we, hadn't, gotten do, we hadn't gotten there yet. So no. that, if the council decides as part adopts as a planning objective, the remainder of the funding for East Dogwood, we'll definitely budgetize that for the upcoming year. Uh, for East Dogwood, and he'll finish the um, the South Dogwood design, um, and you can we can budget for that as well if you'd like to. That's up to the council if you'd like to go ahead and put it in this coming year's budget as well. But that's up to the council. I did want to comment on that. Um, put it in the budget. I need to know. Remember some of the things that the engineer discussed with the council on South Dogwood was um, the, the tree removal challenge. And if you do not want, you don't care if there's gonna be an adjacent path like you described, Gary, then he can certainly design that in places where he can. Well, we if need that's, the safety curve in that. The, that um, that yeah, I mean, I, I don't think we'd heard that before, that we could. That well, no, Tom, from, Tom and I have talked about right, the path uh, just between the two of us at times. But the, I think the part from Tall Pine to the East Dogwood intersection, I think we can do a, a path on that one. You, you mean know? one adjacent to the existing yeah, asphalt? Yeah, adjacent. But when you go north or south of that bridge, from Fairway Drive back to the cemetery, I mean, that's going to be a, that's going to be a monster. I mean, that's going to sure, be a Sure, I mean, not, nobody's going to want to wake up and look out the window and see a wooden structure in their See somebody yard. walking in their yard. Right. Basically is what they think. Exactly. But it's right of way. I have seen some kind of drawings. I don't remember how long ago, certainly within the last month or two though, where they did have a walkway laid out along South Dogwood. I think Wes probably has um, the old path design that yeah. could be you know, that might be it, what but you saw. they weren't design drawings. There weren't any Cause here's sections a, or grading or anything like that. Stuff. It would look like just a lines on paper. And here's the bottom line. I mean, it's been studied to death. We've got, I mean, we had the Dogwood Trail group that, how many years did they operate, Tom? Year and a half. And they brought forth a recommendation and nothing was done. Are you talking about the Dogwood Trails Task Force? No, I'm talking about it just stopped with them. They they made their recommendation and then right. we stopped. No well, work was ever done. Pedestrian. Yeah. yeah. We didn't design a path. But we no, I know, but they came trail. with recommendations. Right. The recommendation there was to, was to create a bike trail on South Dogwood, whether it was part of the street, we never decided. In fact, we talked about doing a shared trail there. But we never made a decision to, to to actually build anything. We didn't make a decision to build, but we have made a decision to design all the way. I'm pretty sure. Leo, you were on, you remember what we did? Well, I know there was a survey being done on it. Now, from there, I don't remember if we actually put the whole design in. Because I think it was going to, we wanted to know where the road was. And I think at that time, we were thinking more of rebuilding the road. 
remember us directing, I don't remember us directing the town manager to give us a design for South Dalton. I don't remember. I don't that. know about directing that. I know we. I thought we budgeted that. We we uh, we budgeted we the whole pack uh, the money design. For I the think money. we did the first phase with East Dogwood, and the money's still there to okay. do uh, South Dogwood. But we probably didn't action. ask them to do it though. You recall anything about this, Bonnie? I, we're gonna have. If, if, I mean, it's no problem. We can get put it on his task list, and I can use some existing engineering money um, to have him do that uh, for South Dogwood. I mean, that's just gonna be a task we'll get him to do and bring it to you. But I need to, the things that we were talking about. I needed to hear to make sure he could incorporate in his mind because he was operating before thinking that if we did a path. We didn't want to tear the path up five years later when we come back and have to redo South Dogwood. That was one of the big challenges. So, go ahead. It's one of our big challenges. I think you ought to do the design and then make it available to the public because I'm hearing a lot of negative uh, responses from people that actually live on dog, uh, South Dogwood. The people right. that really want it don't live on South Dogwood. There are others that want it. So. I think we need to make those designs available so people know what their what the impact's going to be. But, uh, but the other thing I, I would add, add to that, Fred, is you, you, South Dogwood is not a safe street to drive on. Whether you live there or whether you live on Hillcrest or Seal, you have to use that road to get in and out of the town quite often. Right. I think our our our, our responsibility is is public safety as a, as the number one thing. So we're. Whether somebody wants a bike path in front of their house or, or a road improvement for their property, while it's important, it should not should, it should not be the driver. We've got to we've got to say okay. Are we it may not be a driver, but it's a factor. I think we should consider. I, I agree with you. But I think we have to make the final decision based on what's in the best interest of the public in, in general, not just visitors, but mostly residents. You started to say something. Chris. You know, I would I would go so far as to say I may regret this, but. Probably the number one health, safety, welfare issue facing our town is a walkway on South Dogwood. That I, I personally saw two girls run off the road last year, you know, from the traffic situation up there. They were on bicycles. Um, it, that's a very dire situation over there. Jody Hess recommended years ago to me we put up signs on that street that bikers should, bikers should not use this street in the summertime. You travel at your own risk type thing. And it might not be a bad idea to say, just voice that. Not, not, not a safe route for bikers. Maybe we need better enforcement on uh, South Dogwood. Police enforcement. But what, what would they be enforcing? Speed limit. Speed. Speed primarily. Reckless well, driving. Stop sign. They never stop at, uh, at the uh, intersection up there. The problem, and, and we all know, the problem is the amount of traffic that travels that road in the summertime. Right. In the wintertime, it's, it's, you know, residents usually, most residents, not all, take their time. I stand, I've, I've stood, I've stood in Al's yard back there and seen residents, not tourists, not even, not even look at that stop sign. And I'm talking about going north, not turning to East Dogwood. And that are, those are our residents. And I mean doing 35 miles an hour, no break, no nothing, just come right through, come out. Um, and said something, you know, I've seen it. So that's an issue. But then in the summertime, the issue becomes the amount of traffic. And then you've got kids out of school in the summertime. So that doubles the impact. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is a safety issue. I, do, I agree 100%. We can't do it all. But I would suggest that when they look at the design, since we're talking about it, we need to look at whether or not that road needs to be paved at the same time, how that's going to impact all those factors so we don't have to come back in five years. Tear, you know, and now we've got to pave the road and we're going to tear up our, our path. So we need to look at the whole scope. That's part of why I'm kind of 
an advocate of doing the East Dogwood walkway right now while we have the engineers determining all that. And then that could be in a, a future year's budget. Uh, I, I think this goes back to the CIIP committee for, for, their, for their study and their, their recommendations to council. I really think that's where it has to come from. If we can agree as a CIIP committee to bring this to council and say we, we, this needs to be addressed, and council needs to have to address it, um, I think that'd be the way to, to approach it. Well, the, the given the amount of time, it sounds like we're in, there's a fair amount of consensus. How we get there is we're discussing. It sounds like that's a priority. I mean, increase our capital expenditures. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's that's a possibility. Yeah. I think this is important. I mean, we can't do it with what we're putting in there now and do the roads and, yeah. and everything now. We're going to have to increase what we're doing as far as capital. But maybe, but but the other side of it is if we use up. We, we're going to use up this grant, the, the Tourist Bureau grant, that's only, this year. That's only 50% of it. That's right. But, right. but that's, that's nothing to say that next year and we, can't, we can't apply for another one we can. for we can. another portion of the road, right? I understand. Maybe South, South Dog. And, then, and I would recommend we apply every year for it. Yeah, absolutely. That's where I think that getting started on a section, whether it's east or south, showing... Um, showing results will help us in those future grant uh, applications. You know, that's, you know I, I would hate to let this grant expire without us not having done anything. Well, I agree with you. And the only thing is, the only thing I'd say is when the engineer met with us as a council, and then that's before you were here, um, we made some suggestions uh, and to him when he brought it forward and hopefully the the example I'll use is going down the hill he wanted to tear up part of that road and um, replace it over there and I think we can line that that road's large enough that if you line that road correctly to where the car's got a lane there's there's a three foot section there now you could add another two feet and still be off the road or the traffic pattern and take that money and and do it from there back and uh, come getting, up south. You're getting into, into engineering issues right now, which I don't, I don't really feel comfortable. Okay. I, I don't have a plan in front of me, so I can't address that. I can't talk to that. But, but we, can we all agree that is a priority for us? If you'd like to see the, as one of our objectives here for this, as a planning objective for our town manager to, to, to get in. And it may be over the course of two or three years. What? A bit of it this year, a bit of it next year. And East Dogwood? All, all of that. Oh, okay. All, you know, to the Mr. Mayor, may, just to, so we can be crystal clear, because I need to, to make sure we have the direction and there's no misunderstanding. Could we call, do you ask for action to direct me to direct the town engineer to complete the design of South Dogwood now? What do you think, Council? Is that... If that's, I thought I heard a consensus on that, but I don't know. Maybe yeah, I did. Now, right. are we talking about the design of the walkway or the design? Walkway, walkway. Walkway. Yeah. As long as he looks at the factors we, we stated about, right. are we going to have to tear up this road to do it? And right. And what do we need to do and do we need to do it together? So we don't have to redo road, what we do. The road and the walkway. So we don't have to undo what we yeah, do. I understand. Is that, is that clear, Peter? I need a, need a, motion. a motion for the I'll council, council to direct me, please. <laughs> to direct Peter to, to do what he had just said. South end, South Dogwood. South Dogwood, On the discussion part of that, if I could, well, go ahead, you need a second, I guess. Second. Um, I, I do, one of the things we had talked about in the beginning was to segmentize, like you mentioned, Gary, is have a segment from the intersection to the Tall Pine Bridge and then another segment from Tall Pine Bridge to um, the cemetery. So that's probably how it would come in as a seg as segmentized. Is there any um, prior any preference as to priority on a segment? So it seems to be in favor of, of bringing the traffic from Tall Pine up to up to East Dogwood. And I don't have any problem with that. I mean, just we're starting someplace. I don't care. It's all the start. Okay. Yep. Anybody have any other thoughts about that? I'm not sure I quite understood. What Which segment do you prefer him to design first? 
If I had my druthers, I think the most important section of walkway is from the cemetery to the three dog tee. That is hands down, I think, the most important section. If you had to divide that in, in two pieces is the question, I think. If I had to divide that into two pieces, I'd say from the cemetery to the Tall Pine Bridge because it's more of a connection for the kids to the school. Um, you know, they would like, I'm making up hypotheticals here, but if you had children at your house, Mr. Newberry, and wanted them to walk, uh, bicycle to school, they're fine on North Dogwood. But then they would only have from the Three Dog T to the Tall Prime Bridge to be on the road, and then they could be on a walkway the rest of the way to school. The, from the Tall Pine Bridge to the school, I think is probably the most critical if we had to start divvying, you know, separating parts of South Dogwood. But again, I say my, my number one priority is that we start somewhere. Well, we're hopefully we're, we're starting East Dogwood. Design. The other the argument I would throw at you, if we're doing East Dogwood, and we do from Tall Pine to the the intersection, then we've got a connection all the way from the beach to Tall Pine. And that's a good argument. That's the only thing I. That's a connected yeah. path. Yeah. I mean, I? It, it probably doesn't matter. I mean, I think I can tell him, go ahead and save my ties, and we'll probably have both of them at the same time, but just in case we got in a time crunch. Right. I think I kind of heard anything, but I just want to get direction of uh, action. Yeah. yeah. We got a motion yes. in a second. Yes. We have a motion in a second. All in favor of, tell me what we're going to do, guys. Aye. Wait a minute. What are we doing? We're going, we're going to, to direct Peter, direct mm -hmm. Peter. Peter to have our engineer look at both do sections. A, do a design for South Dog with a bike path, a yes. walking path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's going to considering gonna, everything and, you've talked about. And he's going to go from Tall Pine to the to the stop signs first if the engineer has to segmentize it, and then from there back up to the cemetery. Okay. You got that, Peter? All the best. It's what he said. If it happens to include the road, then that's, we need to hear that too. And, and please, yes, let it include. If it doesn't have to, then great. If it doesn't have to include the road, that's fine. I, I, I got everything, and I'm sure it will in his design. Um, I, I'm going to portray the concerns that everybody had, and then I'm sure in the design he'll come up with our comments back to the council about the design, uh, condition of the road. I guess in, in simplest terms, if, if, he, if we have to use the road for that trail and widen the road accordingly, I mean, he, he can present that to us. Mm -hmm. is his, is his, That's his, his job. his suggestion? Okay, yeah, we got that. That's taken care of. Uh, so we're talking about South Dogwood. Can we get a, did y'all vote on that? 5-0. 5-0, okay. Sorry. Yeah, five, sorry. Five, I'm sorry. That's all right. I, I my my fault. That. He voted and then, then asked us to explain it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Um, Mr. Mayor, if I might make another comment following up on that. Um, I think the council, at this date, we're in the middle of February, and Bonnie and I are going to, of course, need some direction, and I don't think you want to pop up at one of the planning meetings for the budget and talk, have this exact same discussion again. So I would ask if y'all would consider, if you do want East Dog something done construction-wise in the next fiscal year on East Dogwood Trail, we would need very shortly to have some direction to put that money in the budget for our share for the town share you got the grant share but i would need to have direction from y'all to put it in for next year if that's can you give us an idea we, i i that it's going to be a wide range it's going to have to be it's somewhere the total cost the total cost he gave us before was somewhere between 350 and 500 um, and that's all I got to work on right now. I don't, we hadn't bid it out. And the grant's how much of that? The grant is 119. So we're talking. We're probably talking 300. I mean, I'm, I'm just guessing. 200 to 400? Yes. Well, I, if we had to, I'm guessing. Why don't we guessing. just commit, well, we just commit to, to yeah, directing Peter or asking Peter to put uh, $250,000 in the budget for including the grant. Recently, East Dogwood. Which would be 350. Back. No, 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 including the grant. 250 including the grant. That's, That's what I said. The grant, the grant. We have to 
Yeah, we'll budget the full amount, but they're trying to figure out how much the break is. Well, I can do that, but we're just trying to figure out what the break is. And they say, whatever, uh, something over 119000 119, And all I got is what he told me before, the maybe, swag. Maybe, maybe he can get, and it's tough, I know now, but maybe he can get a little, hone that down a little bit. Yeah. But I, but I think, maybe. you know, that's, uh, from my standpoint, I, I think we should budget that money in the next, next fiscal year, I think. I, I don't have another. Uh, that's about the, the, the wide, the high low range I had. But you doing budget three hundred thousand. You mean now? I mean, I, I, following up what Chris said, I will have more from the engineer between now and your budget session, and I can budget that amount. And then you say that's too much at the budget session. You don't need to debate an amount today okay. if you don't want to. Let me get clear. Yeah. Are you asking us to move money out of the no. fund over? No, sir. All I'm asking you, you is to budget for next year. direct me to budget for the East Dogwood Trail path. That's all you got to do if you want it in for next year. All right, Council. I'll make it. Okay, all. let me ask a question, Tom, before you do. Do we have the money to do it now, to go ahead and start? That's in the... No, we don't have that money reserved. right now. Well, we've got a capital. We don't have it budgeted right now, but I'm not, what's I'm the balance in capital reserve? I'm talking about if we moved it out of the reserve to go ahead and start. Let's see if I can come up with a balance. Well, that, well, you understand what I'm trying to do? Get it started. I understand you're trying to get it started immediately. Yes, sir. Yeah. Put it out for bid. Okay. But, if, but we can yeah. put it. But even if we put it out for bid, even if let's say it went out for bid tomorrow, you're going to have a month bid period, right? Right. So we're going to be right in the budget cycle anyways. I'm right. not against doing it right I'm, now. I'm not. But I'm just but saying. I want to get it started. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm pro that. I'm just saying. <laughs> By the time we're done, it's going to be in the, in the budget. And maybe we pull some from the reserve for that. So I, I, now, Tom, make your motion. I'm sorry. My motion is going to be that we, had, we direct Peter to go ahead and, and put funds in the budget for this, for this coming fiscal year to allow us to construct the East, East Dogwood walking path. I second that. Any further discussion on that? Okay. Again, that your motion is say again. You, the intent is for me to budget it for eighteen nineteen. Yes. Is that the motion? Right. Okay. And and Chris and and I'm going back to what Chris just said. If we bid it out this next month, it'd be a thirty day bid period, and then we'd be in the cycle for next year. Could we do that so we wouldn't be waiting? Is my point. Because it takes a while. To it might take you two weeks to negotiate the contract. You know, and get all that together. But then I'd, I'd prefer to not to drag money out, out of the other. Well, we don't have to. We don't have to. That's not what your motion was. No. You, you just budgeted it. Hold on. Tom, it's not going to come due until after the budget, after July. Right. I mean, even well, if you bid it and we accept it, it's not going to come due until, until the next month. Yeah, I mean, I understand. The you essentially have covered the money. Exactly. So you have to have the money when you bid it out. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. The contract with the purchase you don't have to. Well, that's when they approve the contract. Right. That's not when I. We can go ahead and authorize him to bid now. If you want to do that, just and just see what the prices are, so bid prices. Yeah. I mean, we got to make a. If that's what the council wants to do. It'll give you a better, a better basis to make a decision on. If you had a, if you had a bid price, mm -hmm. you know exactly. What the, you're the only thing I caution about that is, we, we, um, the companies that bid, we, we got to make sure, we got to make sure they know what we're doing because they don't like to bid if they know we're just shopping. I, I wanted to ask you, what design are we actually doing on East Dogwood? We were presented one by the engineering firm, and then there was a lot of discussion about modifying that. So what design are we really going to build? Let's, let's do this. Let's, let's have him bring that design back to us one more time. Yeah. I think. I agree. Huh? Thank you, sir. Because we don't need a lot of elaborate construction, especially down near the intersection at uh, 12 in East Dogwood. Mm -hmm. um, there's plenty of room there to put a we can, lane in. We can simplify that. And yeah. Move that, move that trail over to the south side of that street and come on up the hill. 
Yeah. Yeah. We don't need much construction. Joe, bring that back to us. All right. And I'm sorry to get finite with y'all, but uh, your next meeting is already jammed up with matters that y'all wanted on that meeting, the council. So I would propose let's bring it back in the mid-March planning meeting for budget planning. That's fine. Is that? I'm just throwing that out there. That's, that's also a better option for us to make to make changes to it or talk to him about what we'd like to see changed and agree on that. Right. All so, in, all in favor. Well, we, ha we haven't voted on the last motion. That's yet. what I said. All in favor. All in favor. Well, well the, repeat what, the. Uh, what's the motion again? To put the, the money motion? in the budget for 1819 to okay. do East Dogwood Trail. East Dogwood Which Trail. is not moving out of Capital Reserve. It's just as he just formulates the budget. That's right. correct. Okay. Any further discussion about that? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Five to not, five nothing either on, on moving ahead with the, with the East Dogwood Trail like pe walking path. Uh, Councilman McDonald mentioned increases in spending um, for capital projects. Um, Councilman Newbray said the same thing. Um, I don't know where to start with this because I'm not sure we're, we're we've got so many things on the table right now. So well, many irons in the fire. Where do we do we do we add one penny of tax revenue to this to our to existing five hundred sixteen thousand dollars? Where do you where do y'all want to start? Well, with? here's you just did by appropriating money for that East Dogwood bike path. That's a capital project. Right. It so is now. yeah. So. I can give you, right now we're doing three cent, right, Peter? Am I right if I heard you we're correctly? Three on, we're, we're doing three cents on the old tax rate. Yes, um, and that does make out to be just under four cents under the 2013 revaluation. So four, just under four cents. Under so the, my, my thought would be, and we get $130,974 per one cent, right? Okay, and we're right now at point zero three nine four. That's what we're spending on capital projects. Okay, my recommendation would we move that to five point five? And where would that money come from? It'd be budgeted. No, I mean out of our operating budget, or do we need to raise taxes? No, we don't need to raise taxes to do that. It's in there. We're just going to ask our town manager to budget 5.5 percent of our. And what 5.5, and I'm probably wrong on this, would be about 715 thousand dollars. So, what we'll see the net effect of all the calculations would be in the April planning meeting. At that point, we will have revenues come in, and hopefully, it'll be as. Gary described it, that we'll be able to balance it, even if, if you vote to pull it up to 5.5. Now, Jim, understand we just appropriated a bike path. I understand that. Okay, that's going to be at least 200 plus thousand right. dollars, not counting the grant. But we're going to have to cover that grant until they pay us back. So we don't want to, re what I don't want to do is reduce the amount of roads we're improving each year. Right. which is right now at 500 and whatever thousand dollars. So this is for capital projects total. Including walkways. Including everything. Right. Which walkways, is bridges, canals. canals. I mean, it, right. it's everything. All kids. May I make a statement though? Our understanding is we're budgeting for East Dogwood separate from this. We did. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. We'll make sure. See, so, so in, in that scenario you're saying go up to 5.5 and and he's well, we, we, yes we, that's where it would come up in this I'm proposed to, so yes to that's correct well, we could adjust that for you all right five, i think it's too far to go here well what do you suggest I mean, right now we're, we're at the difference between three whatever it is. we're at three nine four point zero three nine four uh the max i'd go to would be five how about five i said five how about five Let's make that five. five. <laughs> I say five. What would five be, Bonnie? Six hundred 
Yeah, 654-870. I, I think I'd like to hold a little money in reserve here if we can. I think that's funny, if, as long as you agree with it, Gary. I mean, as long as you I'm good. Well, May 654. 654 870 is five cents on the current, um, current tax rate. Yes, sir. Peter, you were going to. Yeah, may we style the motion for the record as uh, a establishing an, a, an annual budgeting policy of 0.05 cents based on the 2013 revaluation? And when the next one kicks in, that same policy rolls over revenue neutral. That's what I said. Gotcha. Okay. That way we don't cents. have to do this every year. And if we don't I want to. I mind the five cents, as gotcha. Tom has gotcha. suggested. Thank you. Appreciate that. So we're set on that? We have to vote on that? Yeah, I made the motion. Any further discussion? Did I, get, did I get a second on Gary's motion? I'll second it. All right. Well, we've discussed it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, so all we're right. going to change that number to five cents. We I haven't. Wanna, I want to ask though that. When's the last time we changed it, Peter? Uh, the actual resolution or set policy has never changed since I've been here. Okay. It has gone up and down by annually on some decisions, probably three times since I've been here. One of which was last year. One of which was we did take a halt trail, and another year it was it went up as well. But the actual policy has never changed since I've been here. Okay. When. I understand the comment, and I'm sympathetic to it about, you know, speeding up the pace on road rebuilds and repairs and everything. But is there a limit to how many of these that we can do out here on an annual basis based on the contractors that we have out here? I mean, we've, they, in, remember RPC and Barnhill. In talking with the presidents of those companies, Personally, yeah, I had they too said, recently. They said to me that I'm a multi-million dollar company. I can do whatever you contract, and that's that's verbatim what they said to me. I asked that I asked that exact question. Okay, I'm skeptical of that. It sounds like a, a business line. I, I'm not and, saying and, I'm skeptical and of and you, and what you said, but. I understand what you're saying, Jim, but and I've been told, you know, we can only do this much, we can only do this much. Well, it's based on money. And the other thing I'll say to that, not to fault anybody, the other thing is the projects are coming in higher, higher than they did in the past, and we've not adjusted. So now we're doing Palmetto Lane down to a point where we should be doing it all the way to the end because all of our money's gone. Uh, it's not a matter of we don't want to do it. It's just the cost have gone up. Mm -hmm. And we've not adjusted our, since, well, Peter, how many years you've been here? It's been about yeah. 10 years. I read yeah, through the documents. It was about 10 years ago that they devoted that three. <laughs> so I'm, a, I'm trying to adjust for inflation, more or less. I, I'm all for putting more money for it. And let's see what happens. Can we speed up the pace of the number of roads redone. I will tell you, I would be willing to vote to borrow money if we could spend up, speed up the pace to get those roads done. I mean, and I would have rather have done it the past few years because it was, you know, interest rates were really good mm -hmm. and they're going up now. We discussed the, uh you're right, they are going up, Gary. And not, it's something we, we don't control. We have to, we have to recognize it, though. Gary also mentioned uh, adding money into our, into our budget for beach nourishment, some kind of a capital uh, reserve. Uh, he also mentioned, or somebody did, sand fencing and plantings. I think in, in years times. past, we've done, we've done lots of plantings. Yeah, I want to make, if I could, just make two follow-up comments. Um, one is y'all the uh coastal engineer will be here march the 6th to give the council a report on the project that you uh, approved last year as far as a survey of the southern shores beaches um i have seen a draft of it 
and he was going to finalize that. He's going to present it that night. Um, he, what I've seen so far is they're going to make some recommendations to for monitoring of our beaches. Um, I, I didn't see anything in there that called for pumping sand yet, um, but I told him to come with some pricing on what he was recommending as well, so you can see that that night. Um, the sand fencing, we, um, as I said, I've said this in the past, but we, we have put it, when I first came, it was being put out by the town using the occupancy tax money that we get each year. That's roughly $24,000. The sand fencing was getting destroyed on an annual basis so much that the town could not keep up with having to remove it at that time. So we made a, a administrative policy that we would use the money for plantings and let the individual landowners do the sand fencing. Um, that has seemed to work so far for those who were complaining about um, the beach in front of their houses. I hadn't had any more complaints about well, where's my sand fencing. Oh, I got to do it, so yes, we'll do it. So that's been what the reaction has been to us. Um, the Fencing for a publicly pumped area, yes, absolutely, that would have to happen. No question about that. If we did any more nourishment, sand fencing's definitely got to go there. Um, we do, Public Works is in the process right now of evaluating whether or not we can sprig ourselves or with volunteer help like Duck's doing. That would cut down on the fund, on the use of the $24,000 funds, and we could use those for other things on the beach. So we're kind of looking at that at this time as well. There's some places where sprigging cannot happen because the high tide's just going to take it away immediately um, when it comes up. So and there are other spots where annually they'll pop up and we, yes, we'll sprig those. But we've traditionally in the last, well, historically in the last five years spent all the 24,000 on sprigging. So hopefully we can save on that by maybe doing some of it ourselves this year. We're still trying to evaluate that. What's the fate of the occupancy tax to uh, Southern Shores? You sent us some scenarios on that. The fate? Yeah. Is there it's still in place. I hope it stays in place. I was going to say, there's no move to take it away from no, us. No, none that we know of at this point. Okay. No. Yeah. Um, I think, what, as I said, each year, Bonnie, Bonnie and I have showed in the budget each year, it's roughly about 30% of the Octane's operating budget. So if these rental houses went, let's, I think what they're trying to do at the Business Bureau is portray a scenario where if rental houses and rental income went away, then that money would go away and each town would suffer the consequences of reduced revenues because of that. I think that's what they're trying to show. But as y'all saw in the, um, what they put together is about 30% of our tax rate equivalent of about 30% of our revenues is the occupancy tax. But I don't know of any move to change it at the state level at this point. So, hope not. There's yep. a, it, it probably will come up in the session this summer again. There's a, there's a local person who is a, mm -hmm. who has the authority and the ability to bring it back up, and I think it may come back up. There's a I guess a thorn there. What, one area, another area. I mean, it, I'm sorry. It's another possible area it could come up. Um, coastal legislators in the middle part of the state have advocated a state dredging fund, sand beach nourishment fund in the past. Dare County, its towns. Um, through management have always opposed that because our concern was that if a state dredging scheme were adopted, it would do away with our funding mechanism, which is we think has worked fine for this county and its towns. But if a state dredging fund were established, I think the occupancy tax may be susceptible to being a target at that point for sure. So that's another way it could come up with the General Assembly. Don't forget, right. we're the only county that really has done our own completely from, from the very beginning. Yeah. Most of the counties south of us relied on federal money for nine years. So the, the state level, they, they want to get part of that money in their pockets. There's no question sure. about that. But I, they decide the priorities. We can, we can tap into that. 
drilling uh, money to get sand from now on. <laughs> I would recommend, you know, I mean, the council definitely hear what Ken and the other engineers have to say in March on, on their presentation and go from there for sure. Have we budgeted for, I know the monitoring is a yearly thing, I believe, or an annual thing that we do have to keep up with. Now, maybe this report here will cover mm -hmm. this fiscal year, but, but that's something we might want to consider. Like, I think you said, I want to say it's like $30,000 or something to kind of, every year kind of do the monitoring so that, particularly with our beaches that we've already nourished, that we could get potential FEMA reimbursement. Uh, if we keep up. Yep. Good, good question for us to engage with him then when he comes, when Ken comes. We, need, what? we don't have to tell you to do that, to budget that money. You, you'll do, know to do that once he says what we have to have. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't understand what you said. What? You, we don't have to direct you to budget that money at this point. No, I, I mean, that's part of what council has acted on before. Right. right. Tom, since we're on tax collection, Peter? We're talking about occupancy tax. What about the tax collection? I know we got into with the, the zoning and all that. We saw that we have over 200 or so Airbnbs, mm -hmm. BROBs, and et cetera out there in our community. Are we collecting occupancy tax from those people as, I mean, is that, are, or are they just hidden out there? And we, they, the perception is they're hidden, but the county does collect from them. They have an auditor, and that auditor gets online weekly. And um, I talked to them about two weeks ago, again, about how they were coming along. And But what I've seen, they, they're real successful with it. There are people who are getting by, obviously. Um, but Airbnb, if they're registered with Airbnb, they got to pay through that anyway. They're collecting. There are others that are not. So they're actually online looking at websites, et cetera, um, taking complaints all the time. But they do have an auditor who does that. Yeah, and the okay. reason I ask, I think we all got an email or two from different groups talking about how to do that right. and, and that it's an issue. Well, and it's not just on the coastal communities, but other communities. So. This, at the church bureau meetings, this has been a, a real hot topic. And the, the uh, Dare County Tax Department came and gave a presentation about this. And when, exactly to Peter's point, um, Airbnb automatically does that. As soon as you're part of the program, the check is actually written by Airbnb directly to mm -hmm. Dare County. So that's a, a large proportion of it. And then you've got um, the VRBO. Those the homeowners are responsible for paying. And, and what they indicated was that they're not being too too strict yet. They're informing people who may not know that they need to pay this that they should. And what they're finding is generally they've got pretty good compliance. And they are monitoring it. Um, that on the Tourist Bureau, there's been a move recently also to try to break out those monies to see how much, and, and this is more of an accounting thing, how do you see how much, you know, they, they can't just take the Airbnb money because then they could a smart financial person could get back to exactly how much money they're making. They could be giving out proprietary information. But if they can lump the VRBO money with it and to say all these, and there's a couple other ones too, what? all these groups, non-rental company groups account for X amount, it would allow, I know the, rent, the rental groups, the rental companies are really interested in how much the market share this is taking. So there's a lot of pressure um, to do that and they're working on that right now. So, they, it's, it's a hot topic. But they do say they get most of the money. Once people know about it, they do find that it, people generally comply. You know, I want to go back to the beaches just for a moment and ask um, Mr. Rasco or Wes. As I recall, recently, because of this beach renourishment, we adopted an ordinance that said you cannot do beach pushes in the area that was renourished. Correct. Are there any restrictions on the rest of our beaches? Because we're, it seems to me we're gathering a lot of duck sand on our beaches, which certainly helps us. But it could be um, kind of frustrating if homeowners got out there and beach pushed that sand. It only, the ordinance that was adopted only applies to the area where the nourishment was applied. Anywhere else in the town, as long as it's the, as long go through as the camera, go through the process, obtain the correct permits, you can do it 
in other locations of the town. Okay. I, I kind of suspected that's what the answer was, but I just bring it up because so we can be aware that we, and again, I'm not the coastal scientist, but it appears to me that some areas of our beach and are raising in elevation quite a bit, and it's got to be from the drift from the north. So if we start seeing a uh, bonanza of beach bushes out there or something, we may want to look at that because that could be actually detrimental to the dunes on the northern parts of our town. I don't know. It's just maybe a question for our coastal engineer on March 6th. And, and tying into that too, that's the, um, I've been getting hints that where the beach nourishment occurs, and, and I, I dealt with this in Hatteras, the camel line is completely changing. You're moving, you may know this already, but I don't know if everybody here does. Since the last meeting, I know we talked about it. They're moving to a static camel line, which sometimes, instead of having it related to a, a movable line, first line of stable natural vegetation, they're moving to a, like a set line. Here it is in wherever they did nourishment. And now, the interesting part is, I can tell you in Hatteras, where they're drawing the line gets really interesting because it's, in some cases, across the highway even. I mean, it gets really, it, so, so I, I think it's something, the, the new maps aren't always online and you have to contact them directly to get that information. Um, but you've got, it's interesting because you have homeowners who are literally on the other side of the highway and they're, you know, the highway's in the cam zone. So I think a lot of this stuff is very much in flex. It's going to change again, and, and as more nourishment comes in, just keep an eye on it with what, what Jim was saying. That's all. I'm, br I'm just bringing that up. So I think we need to keep an eye on those northern beaches, um, not because they're threatened, but because they might be threatened in the work that was done by Southern Shores and Duck. Yeah. I'm interested to hear what the survey, what the engineer has to report. Yeah. i got to question since you brought push I thought and I hadn't I hadn't remembered to even think about um, our lifeguard service I was asked they're taking a tractor down along the dune line to set a path for their four-wheelers last season <coughs> are they doing gonna continue to do that because they were cutting into the dune line and I know that's not approved by anybody other than them, but that was seen and reported to me. If they if they're cutting into the actual dune line on the on the vegetated above the first line of stable vegetation, they need to somebody needs to report that to me. They're okay. supposed to stay below the first line of stable vegetation. Now that means they're going to be right at the toe of the dune, and what some people perceive as cutting into, well, they may think that toe, they perceive it as they're right at the toe below the first line of stable vegetation, and that's because of the people using the beach. Um, they like to stay above people sitting and laying on the beach and not taking an ATV through the folks that are laying and sitting. Well, my, I, I just have to say, my observation is. They don't stay over there anyway. They come out where the people are. Sometimes they will. And, and sometimes, and sometimes, yeah. You know, 10, 15 yards out away from the dune. It just depends on where they feel most, supposedly it depends on where they feel most comfortable riding as far as safety of the public. But they're not supposed to drive above that toe. Some people consider the toe all the way down to the, halfway down the beach though, so, yeah. Mentioned Gary about putting, setting money aside or adding something for beach nourishment. Mm -hmm. I would suggest we wait till we hear from from Ken Wilson in the, in March and see what he has to tell us about our beach. That's fine. I just that's something we need no, to look at. No, it's a good at. idea. Good thought. I didn't know, but just my suggestion we just wait on that. And Peter's already it sounds like we're going to do that too. But we yeah. need to. We do need to think about it because I five agree. years from now we're probably going to be looking at some more. Yeah, hopefully not. But you're probably right. Um, we talked about, Peter talked to us about the sand fencing and plantings and how he's handling that. I'm okay with that. He's, he's, he's got it budgeted, apparently. Um, well, I left somebody that, out, somebody's comments out. Comments what? Did I leave out something somebody asked me that we look into? Well, I, I had one about the, we had two, you had one. 
about the building, and I yeah. have one about the permit, about uh, electronic permits. Yeah, I know you. You, did. you, Tom said, and I agree with you on this one. Is and I, I actually had it written down. There's a timeline of needs for the buildings that we own yeah, and the grounds. So just a facilities assessment. A facilities assessment. Yeah. I think that's a good idea because, you know, when are we going to need a roof and when are we going to need a HVAC and those kinds of things. So I think that's a good idea that I, we go forward with that. Can I have a motion to direct the town manager to go, to go ahead and see if he can get us a price for that or, or get, a, get a, an estimate to do that work? Do you have money in this year's budget, you think? I don't. Um, I have already discussed, I uh, had an architectural firm come, um, the same that did the county's uh, facilities assessment, and they did a walkthrough about six days ago, and they're going to come back to me with a, a price, a projected estimate, and I can put that in the budget. If y'all, I mean, without knowing what it is, I would ask y'all, if y'all want to do that, go ahead and direct me to put it in, project it. And that's a price to do the assessment. So that's the price to do it. Yes. That's what we're asking you to do. I think. Right. If y'all could. I'll second you, Tom. All right. Any, uh, any further discussion about that? We have a motion and a second. Okay. Motion's made and carried to have you get the price. All right. Okay. Um, to follow up on Chris, uh, Mr. Nason's uh, comment about digitizing files, West. Yeah, the town has maintained, um, as you probably know, hard copies of files that go well before the town was incorporated. Mm -hmm. When structures were built, the, all the documents from Kitty Hawk Land Company or Dare County were given to the town when the town was incorporated. And for the most part, we've kept everything. Um, we do scan, uh, as required by law, we do scan and keep electronic copies of elevation certificates. Okay. Uh, but yeah, Curry Tuck, they do have a system online where you can apply for a building permit or zoning permit online and submit online and pay online. Um, Currently, we have all of our applications and everything that you need, you can obtain from um, the town website, and then they can they have to bring them in physically. Well, um, and it may, be, it may be a transition. It may be where you request or require that, that you get PDF copies of the whole. You don't have to do this. You require that the builders come in with PDF copies of the whole package, which then will save you the scanning time, and essentially will get you where you need to be short term but I would also I think it's worth going to go talk to Bill Noons over I may have already done this go talk to him at Currituck he's got a great system and there's and they have like two-day turnaround on permits you guys are fortunate you have that already you have really good turnaround I'm not criticizing but it's going that way so let's get ahead of it we are um, uh, we are I'm looking at budgeting this coming um, budget year fiscal year to do an electronic or look into electronic uh, permitting software um, it's more for record keeping, not necessarily permit submittal. But we are scheduled to meet with the town of Duck in a couple of weeks. We're going to go through their system that they use. But I don't think that they accept applications. It would be more for us as far as using a specific program software to uh, track and run the, uh, run the permits. Well, and maybe that's the first step. Yeah. I'd push you to keep going. Yes, we're, we're going to meet with Doug in a couple of weeks. Go and to we talk can talk to Bill over there. It, it, it's just, the other nice thing about it is it allows people, it's, it's like I said, it's all going that way. In bigger communities, it's, it's, a, it's a must. Like Charlotte, you have to do it. But the cool thing is you get a little thing and you can log in and you can see comments to the application. So the fire department's looked at it. Everybody's looked at it. You can see what's going on and you can see when it's targeted to be released. And then you print out the building permit. I think that's a good idea to require submittal in PDF format. Curry Tuck County started doing that. They don't want the paper. It, they did that, start doing that more than 10 years ago. Yeah. And it's easier and easier for people who submit these plans to do it via PDF now. 10 years ago, it, it was not quite so easy, but. It puts the onus on folks like ourselves, but we're already doing those PDFs we're already sending them out to the UPS store. Yeah, and, and I like, like the book too. And, but we, we're already sending them out to the UPS store to print them anyways. I don't know, I got rid of my printer. It's, it's, it's not useless, but if I need that service, I'll get that service. And so any place, to Gary's point, that we can... We could make this electronic. Yeah, um, it already is. Yeah. It is already, and yeah. all we need does. We've, we, you know, 
it's been on our radar screen before to anybody that wants to bring it up to talk about it, pads, iPads, et cetera. Not only have it as PDF on the website electronically, but also have it interactive for you all. I don't know if you could use those funds, but I know you got to upgrade in here this year, but that, you know, I remember mm -hmm. last year we didn't know what we were going to do with that money. Mm -hmm. So. Say again. We'll 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 double check back on that. Yeah. Who'd you check with, Bobby Dobbs? Mm -hmm. Check with Bobby. I mean, it, even if honestly, you think about the copy and how much time does it take you to do this? Wow. For all of, I mean, really. You have a lot of paper. A lot when of paper. When you think about the time, it's going to be online anyway. The cost would offset, like you said earlier. You zero balance the first five years out for buying everybody an iPad or right. what have you. So, just a thought. Yep. Let me let me duck back for a minute. Uh, digitizing our uh, our permit applications and so forth. Is your does your volume of, of, of uh, volume of work volume of of those type of applications? What, what would you save a lot of time? Would it save you a lot of time? You and Dabney. It's hard to say. I'm not familiar with that type of system. I'd have to see how it works, but I know Curry Tug does a lot more permits, receives a lot more permits than we do. They're on a completely different level. Um, uh, so I, I really, it's hard for me to say. I, I, I've never really seen how it works. Um, when, folks, when folks bring us a complete permit application, we process it, we review it, we contact them when the permit's ready. They come in, they have to sign, physically sign it in front of us. We think that's important because there, in some cases we have there are conditions that are specific to that development, right. and we want to make sure, or at least they are physically there, and they say they understand what's in the permit. Right. Um, I think that's a positive uh, part of it, but I would have to see how it works before I could say if it would save us time, honestly. Yeah, well, what this time it's also the efficiency of it. Are you, is it is it is it saving the customer time? Is it making is your life any more is it made any more miserable by having to do that manually than have to do it? Uh, I'd have to talk to Dabney. She's she's the permit officer. She's right. she's more involved with it than I am. Um, Buddy and I we kind of fill in for her as needed if, when she's away. Um, so I would have to I'd like to see what she has to say about it. But like I said, the permitting software that we're looking into that's going to make her her job a lot easier. Instead of having mm -hmm. to use Microsoft Excel or PDF documents, this would be one program that can combine everything the way I understand it. And it's a lot more uh, user friendly for her. As far as saving time for the applicant, yes, it would be a lot more time saving for them because they can do it from their home or their office or whatever and not have to come in. Right. Um, but uh, it's cer certainly something we can explore. I mean, it makes sense for them to come in and sign that. I, I think there's something to that to say, okay, it's real. Yes. That, like that, that's, that's a fair point. Um, yeah, but why can't you docu sign? I mean, that's, well, that's true too. You're right. I mean, why come in? I mean, if you can do it online. There's some other hooks to watch out for in doing this. I mean, they're not hooks to stop you from going digital. But what I've seen sometimes is just that, I'm hypothetical here, if I submit a set of plans that need to go before a planning board or these other review committees, then that's kind of putting it off on the town to have to make all those prints for all those boards. So it's got to be thought a yes, little yes. further steps on down the road that's a different animal so to speak um, for building permit applications we require two copies of the building plans when we receive a conditional use permit application or something that involves a site plan they're required to meet they're already required to give us 10 copies of the hard, 10 hard copies to save us that right uh, now that's what i'm talking about things like site planning or things right. like that where you know you got that's where You've got a bajillion copies. Oh, yeah, it's a waste of paper. It, One copy, I get it. You can something yes. needs to scale. But now, beyond that, I don't understand. Now, in principle, I'm 100% for this, but I, you know, I'm holding something back for we need to think it through a little deeper to make sure that it'll work well. What have we left out, guys? Fire department. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a comment about the path that I, I think I heard some all y'all talk about was the interconnectivity part of it. 
Um, we average, you know, on the town map that we put out, the streets, we show the, pa the private paths on that map. Chickahawk Property Owners Association owned paths and also the uh, SSCA owned paths on there. Um, again, if, if there's any uh, interest in, you know, maintaining, repairing, uh, enhancing those type paths as part of interconnectivity throughout the town. It's again, somebody's going, we have to, you know, approach the two owners of the paths and have that discussion again. Um, it comes up occasionally, not, if not annually, every other year when there's damages due to storms, et cetera, but it, man, it does come up in my dialogue. And I know, I know some of y'all hear it at some of their board meetings if you go, but that's just something, that's an impediment to the town getting involved in those. My, my only reason for bringing up the path idea was some sort of a map that you could hand to somebody mm -hmm. instead of having to go online was uh, just to, get, to give them access to our, to, to our entire street system and, and, it, and maybe have those, those paths color coded in some way mm -hmm. that, so we have a recommended path to get from here to there versus just a, a way you can do it. Mm -hmm. It may not even be worth pursuing, but I just thought I'd bring it up and mention to see what, what council thought about it. Uh, I know Chickahawks updating their map, right? In, they're in the process because they've added uh, a couple of sections mm -hmm. off of the property they were donated that they worked on oh, yeah. for however many years. Right. And it doesn't show up on the county map, but it's there. And then the other one, I don't know, what is it, 60? I don't know the number, but between two houses, there was a path, but it was not designated. And those property owners gave them a piece of property that now is designated. So they're updating their maps uh, at this point. That's a beach access path, probably. Yes. It comes off of Spindrift or someplace. Yes. I don't even think it's improved. Is that the one that's improved? It's improved. But that's one from Turtle Pond. That's that. Uh, okay. Turtle Pond. It comes off yeah. clamshell, oh, and, okay. and actually it'll come off and you'll go all the way to the beach. Um, I'm talking about one stone owns this one and, and another family owns that one. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the map's a great idea, the second what Tom said, if only to be able to look at it and say, well, even just amongst ourselves and amongst staff and say, okay, what's missing, like we talked about. There's, there may, we may be able to, when you see the whole thing, say, well, if we just did this little section here, we could then, we could then create a better connection, even and if we have to use part of the road in some areas. And who owns that property, and then negotiate yeah. with, with the Pacific Association of property, negotiate to build a piece of, an extension of a path, or part of it. Mm -hmm. It's just, just a thought. The other thing I thought about was, was I mentioned was the, uh, the stormwater management issue, um, which also become, comes back into a working with the Civic Association because the CPO, I mean, the SSCA owns all those ponds. Do we want to approach them at all and say, hey, would you like to, would you like to uh, work with us to have someone come and do, a, do, some, do some studies about those ponds that really help us with flood control? Is it worth doing that? I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm thinking, how do, we, how do we make this not happen again for us for, for 20 years? Uh, it might not happen anyway for 15 of those years, but just we threw that out that there. Door, and I'm not against it, just saying, if we open that door, you know we've got the folks over on Gingite that's wanting us to take that pond over right? Uh, because they have issues. And I, I mean, I'm just, they've got the, the, the growth, the the weed growth in yeah, the they're, pond. They're handling that though with their carp population. Well, we don't know that yet, but. I think there's a somewhat of a different animal there between, I know what you're getting at here. Well, if you open one is, door, you open another is what Yes, I'm but I think there's some differences here. First of all, the SSEA has got park properties throughout town that everybody enjoys. Nobody can go over to that pond. Um, I mean, it's a matter of being open to the public. Um, you know, the property is being owned. People around Jingite and that area over there have been pretty. But they're about all within the town, so therefore you open a door. Yes, I'm just highlighting there are differences. Because um, I, I can tell you that Chickahawk would probably be 
indebted if Peter would send uh, our equipment over there that cuts bushes back because we have the equipment for the town. They don't. They'd have to contract it. But if, he'd, if they'd run it through there and cut those bushes back for them on a couple of their paths, they would be really indebted to him for doing that. Uh, so, you know, where do we start and stop? And I, I understand the flooding. I'm not against it. I'm just saying once we open that door, we'll have all kinds of requests. Well, let's, let's, let's maybe, 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 maybe say a little bit differently. Um, would it be worth having Peter contact an environmental engineer who'd come in and, and give him an estimate of what it would cost to even consider doing something there and if it's, if it's worthwhile? And if there would be any benefit to it. Would it be any benefit to it? That might involve a hydrologist, it might not, I don't know. But I mean, there are people who do that and it might, if we find out what it might cost, Peter, would be, I guess, the key thing here. I mean, is that something you just have the town engineer do? We need to. He, he, he's got to sub it out. If, if y'all wanted to authorize me, me to do that, he couldn't do it. Okay. It would be, and I would have to approach somebody like George, but environmental professionals, and even he would be subbing out to a hydrogeologist eventually. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, it's going to be an expense. No question about that. Now, we don't know how much, though. So why are we doing that? Tell me why. Why are we doing this? So we can, if we see if we can find some way to mitigate some of the flood waters like we had during during Matthew up on the Avenue, those ponds might be with with dredging might be adequate to to, to eliminate that problem. Because we had a pond all the way from 12th Avenue to Circle Drive. How about uh, contingency pumping, like we did last? We can do that. We can do that. Do we have the pumps and the no. equipment to yeah, do it? We have to rent. Peter can give you more information than I can about that. That's a, that's a pretty big hassle, but he can tell you how that works. Yeah, well, the pumping is what um, most of the local governments obviously do, and it's an emergency pumping situation. We have to have a permit issued on the spot by EPA and, D and DEQ together, and we have an actual pumping plan, the town does, to... Uh, start that process out so we're kind of pre-approved pre-approved for it but it doesn't start until about five days after a rain event so you're gonna have if it's gonna flood it's gonna be flood it's gonna flood and then then about a week later we start the pumping process to try to draw it down so it doesn't prevent anything it's not gonna prevent a flood or anything like that okay. yeah it's just strictly a after the fact type thing we can get to get to get the but I probably should do it. The equipment here to do it. But, but to Tom's point, I mean, stormwater is really important. So, but maybe it's more of identifying at this level to start with. Let's identify the hot spots. Because um, some of it, I mean, some of it you already know, right? I mean, it's just coming up with a list. And, and some of it you deal with when you redo the road. So if, if you do the road in the future, a lot, I know it right in front of our house is that, you know, the, all that water from the road goes right onto my yard. I mean, it's not, it just sits there. And I'm not, it's not the end of the world, but. You sit and sit there. No, I, either way, it just sits there. And Which so, area is this? In front of his house. Oh, yeah, okay. And off of, uh, yeah. off of, uh, so anyways. Off of Gravy Pond. So yeah. The, the, our neighbor had a kayak out there. But needless to say, our which is not the smartest thing to do. Because it's well, uh, w this town has um, engaged in about, I think three, not since I've been here, but about three town-wide stormwater studies in the past that are sitting on the shelf gathering dust just to. That's right. Uh, there's still, uh, yeah. actually there's still those stormwater gathering information things out mm -hmm. on the, mm -hmm. I, every time I turn at the corner, it sits right there on the right in the woods. Yeah, I mean, how do we, how how, do we start to implement that? How was uh, in yeah. charge then? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I mean, really. Yeah, I mean, this is going to happen. In fact, of life. I guess on these between the avenues, it was according to the conventional wisdom at the time a combination of high water table and the rain event that occurred. Ten, eleven inches of rain. Yeah, um, and that's what happened. And then, of course, it, they stuck around because the water table didn't go down. But I'm not. I don't know. Other than that, it's, it would take a hydro, you know, a hydrologist or somebody. To, to determine whether or not any, it could be anything done to mitigate it. And, and in my mind, the other question I have about my own suggestion was, is it really worth it? Yeah, this happens yeah. every 20 years or 15 years. Um, most of the residents know that, now know that it happens. They can take measures on their own to prevent damage. 
Uh, last time on my list is to discuss as much as we want to the whole fire station idea. If you want to bring that up and talk talk about it some more, I'm I'm amenable to hear what anybody has to say. Well, if you don't mind, I want to just go back to the the pond issue and and relate it to some storm drainage issues down NC12. There are still some spots that flood all the time after all the rain events. And if you look at the road, it's the land's coming straight down to the road on both sides. There's no place for that water to go. Is there any way we could talk to DOT to get there right away, graded down? And, that, and you know, and that might even alleviate some of the water being flowing into these. Um, well, never mind. Never mind that statement. But I mean, there are still some problems out there that could be solved, but. On NC-12, that's DOT's responsibility. Yeah, um, just to res uh, give you a comment, during the repaving, we met with them again. And it's been about an annual affair when we meet with them. And they did drag some, do some grading in the right-of-ways at the time of the, of the repaving. Um, but, I mean, we can, constantly, I can certainly talk to them again and again and again and again. But they're to make a project out of the hot spots on 12 um i think we've probably had three sessions in the last 10 years or nine years at least on what to do about that and we've done the town itself has done something of course at east dogwood but the 13th avenue and fourth avenue and i think there's one more that are really a hot spot which is it's going to take some resolve to keep pushing DOT for the stars to be lined up just right for a major project there at those locations. They've got to have major projects to do that and with the funding, et cetera, and they're taking the position that the town contributes to those areas with well, the streets. We can fix our problems, but it's, and again, I haven't done this with a physical survey, but it's kind of obvious to me that a lot of this is, it's not the town, it's, the lack of a swale or the fact that the road is below adjacent grades all around it and they in that comment that they, they will record they'll, they'll agree with you and say y'all free to put a swale in any way you want to put one in and that's what we did of course at east dogwood with the infiltration area but we we don't have the right of way there they don't have the right of way for us to put a swale in in the other look the upper locations around 13th um, that's been a problem. There's just not enough land in excess there for us to grab for it to go to. It's been the challenge in the past. Now, somebody else would may be able to figure it out, but that's our discussion with them at least. They actually brought their equipment here and tried to do some work with their equipment and it, because of the combination of uh, right-of-way and, and uh, utilities. They weren't able to do some, some of the things they thought mm -hmm. they could do. They had the equipment here about three days and pulled it out because they couldn't do the work. And I had this conversation with Jerry Jennings, who, and Peter was there the first two months I was after I was elected the first time, and they said, "Well, yeah, we can fix it if you if you let us widen the road." Uh, yeah, widening the road and having a third lane going up, no problem. Yeah. that's what the, the position that's, is. That's, See if they, they start that tomorrow. There. Yeah. No, I don't that's, think so. They have to acquire right away. Okay. Then you just create more. Okay, I, I see it there. I yeah. see it then. I think Jerry was being honest with us. It's pretty straightforward. Anybody want to talk fire station anymore? Hey, we're all here. We don't have to talk about it. We can wait and see what they bring us the next time around. Are the plans that we're going to see on March 6 enough for the architect to get some more concrete de uh, cost data? Well, you heard what, what uh, Pat said today. The, the, the cost is going to be determined when it's actually put out to bid. The, he, he believes the architect can come really close because he's building so many of these stations. Yeah. That he can come very close, but he, he couldn't lock it down to the exact, you know, within $5,000. And I guess the one yeah. question on, you know, what we're about to see on March 6th when people are going to start asking more about price, what is included in that price? Is it the building? Or does it include all the site work that's going to be involved? Or, you know, I just, if we look at a building at $3 million, I'm making this up, from the architect, well, there may be another million dollars in site work that 
that is just skipping, you know, that it's not site, sinking site into us right away. And street improvements. Yeah. Yes, all these kind of things. Right. You don't have to have street improvements, and I'm sure that's not included. Well, I'm assuming Pintail has not made the capital improvements list simply because we're waiting for the fire station to build it. I That's right. That. Oh, okay, I was saying that. That's, that was discussed uh, by by the, by that the fact that it could be uh, moved up if it were part of a fire department project, but that that's as far as it went. Okay. Uh, the the uh, so far the pricing that he's thrown out, the guest the the estimates have included everything you've said, except for furnishings. I think I'm not sure about that. But all the other site work has, has been included in, a, in the ultimate price he's been swagging. Peter, one thing that didn't come, go ahead. You, you go ahead. You might cover what I'm getting ready to ask. One, one thing that didn't come out this morning um, was um, they have negotiated with Southern Shores Landing to accept their um, sewer from that site into their wastewater treatment plant. So um, they're going to tap in somewhere right on the other side of the boundary line of that somewhere is the plan anyway for that the, the one thing that i recall from prior meetings that wasn't brought up this morning and maybe an additional cost beyond the design that i, I didn't hear how the fire department or the town was going to end up dealing with it is the cost of whatever operational facilities during the construction Right. Yeah. I, I, well, no, not staging, but, but the, operating the fire department. No, they don't have a car. Yeah, staging them over here and there and everywhere. Yeah. I, and I just don't recall. Did not come up. I don't recall that any, this morning any discussion of whether or not that's going to be included in the fire department's normal contract, that they're going to cover it through that, or there's going to be a separate payment. I'm assuming that that's not going to be part of the architect's design. Um, so just. It just yes, rung you. a bell with me when I was listening this morning that that wasn't and included in the price tag. Yeah. Where can we put them? They've got a plan. Have they? But They've got a plan. They might need to review that plan and, and remind them Jim Weinberger no longer works with the school system. <laughs> yeah. And I yeah, mean, and really, they, they to got be, to, Since that's out, I mean, they've talked to the, to, uh, the former facilities director at school, uh, their county schools, and he knows they've got to have that taken care of, whether or not the schools allow them to dock there or somewhere else. We had looked at a couple of, I tried to help them with a couple of other locations in addition to that, but you're right, that's not a done deal until he comes to them and well, they he didn't, finalize when, it. At the board meeting, he, he mentioned it. Mm -hmm. It was no formal plan or no mm -hmm. formal uh, presentation to right. the school board. So, and then the next month he retired. I mean, I've told, you know, they, they know they've got to do something and uh, whether it's to erect another metal shed to park the truck under, you know, during that time as a, as a drop dead mechanism or what. I mean, we've looked at a car dealership like close by, different things for them. Mm -hmm. Do you know if their um, talks with Southern Shores Landing has been well received? by Southern Shores Landing? It's been well received by the um, original developer who has some sort of enough rights to say that they can tap on. I don't know about the individual owners of the, of the properties okay. there. Because that could be a real game changer on the site plan. Okay, now on the site plan, let me, if, if you're talking about whether or not an average citizen is excited about a new fire department next door that's something that we know is coming that we will hope hopefully through these the informational meeting and through um the fire departments and my direct contacts as we proceed as y'all decide yes more and more we're going to we're committed to doing this then the the neighborhood will know that this is going to happen but no we have not gone around and knocked on doors and said this may be your next door neighbor yeah, we have not done that. They haven't done that. Who owns that septic system now? Because uh, they came to us for just yes, they did. It is just it Saga. It's it's part. It's a a holding co another company of Saga or associated with Saga. I'm not going to say it's actually Saga, but it's associated with them. And they do have a lot of capacity. They can right. take on yeah. 
you know, Saga, Saga wanted to develop that parcel of land just to the just to the west of that, and they were going to tie into that same system to do their development, which they didn't follow through with. Anything else, gentlemen? Um, no, we hit them this morning pretty hard. Chris, I'm good. Ben, thanks for your patience. Yeah. Good. Yeah, if I have a motion to adjourn, I sure would appreciate it. Well, you got a public comment. Man. You got oh, a yeah. public comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Hal, Hal, do you want to say something? Um, I don't know. Uh, when you're talking about the left hand turn lane in June, uh -huh. the possibility of saying something after the fall of that. Right. You know, and even though I live there, you know, you know where I live, and I take a beating with that traffic, I have a little bit of a problem with, the, with that left hand turn lane. As far as if you turn that turn lane, you can shut that light off. Okay? We didn't interrupt it not only the flow of traffic through the end, but what are our residents that are trying to get in there going to do one weekend? You know, we're, we, we, we have to come up with some kind of solution. I don't want to hurt anybody. Let's put it that way. Okay? If I got somebody that's, you know, trying to go through there, how are they going to go through there if that lane is turned over? I sat there and do the problem, sat there and I watched all weekend the traffic go through there. When they change that light off, when they turn that, one of the main problems they're seeing is when it, they get the green turn, and the group of X amount of cars make that turn, okay? And then you get east and west turn green, but you're still down that blink of light that goes to yellow. You get a group of cars that just follow through, just like they run in a, a red light or a stop sign. And they keep going through and going through and going through until somebody sticks their nose that's heading west and stops them. When that light turns from green, can that be turned off from green, uh, green to red instead of blinking yellow? Yes. Well, DOT is going to make the lane be blocked totally. No matter, so if it's red, green, or yellow, nobody's going to be able to get in the lane at all. That's the condition that DOT put on us. Yeah, I but I understand what Al's asking. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me ask you this, Peter. Can they make that light like they make our lights? Uh, we asked that question <laughs> twice when we come, of when. When we come out of Juniper in the summertime, we get 20 seconds. It's, it's like boom, and then it's red, mm -hmm. and it never turns yellow. It stays red in the summertime and you only get a short period. And the same thing happens at Dogwood because I worked in that school forever. And I'd always have to ask the DOT folks to change it back to mm -hmm. normal settings in the summertime. Can they make that light green for 30 seconds is which it, about what it is, and then turn red and stop? That would alleviate in groups of traffic. Then there, then there, the, the problem I see out and no, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but the problem I see, Peter, is then they're stacking cars in that lane. I understand that. And DOT doesn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But I, I ride on what the two engineers that came in front of y'all said the last two times. They, Wynn Bridger, they, they said what they would agree to, and that's all I can rely on. I mean, they want to. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Okay, go, ahead. go ahead. I'm certainly, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure. No, I don't. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, so you're. So, Would you propose that as an alternative to no left turn? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Well, okay.
only to find out he's got to drive halfway around the damn town to get to his house because the lights are terrible. But he's also uh, likely to do what everybody else will do is they'll pull into the marketplace. But, they turn around and go and the marketplace block it. I would, I, I, no, my, res they can do that. my response is that I think the council makes absolutely positively sure that you want us to do this. And we, we, we're anticipating making sure of that by asking you for the budget amendment to pay for it sometime in April. So if you don't want to do it or you want to do an alternative like a citizen may suggest that would be the time to do it because then we'd, we'd have to book the company to to come in to put the, the mechanisms down if we didn't want to do a no left turn. I mean, it's, it's an experiment. It's an experiment, but I do, you know, the experiment doesn't work. You do it one weekend in June. Yeah, you stop. Work, and you do it next week and try yeah. something else. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and and that's a that's a big issue. It's our people, and uh, quality the quality. Yeah, well, the safety of life is the other issue because we all sat here a while ago and said, well, we got to put a bike path down through there. We got to put a walk path down through there. Safety. Well, the safety issue is the amount of traffic that's on that road. Traffic uh, volumes. And, traffic and volumes. it's going to continue. I will say it doesn't cost a thing for them to switch that light. And they can do it by computer from a Hosky because they, they set them all up. I know that because I used to deal with them every year. I'd have to call... Malcolm or Stan or somebody who was on the DOT board to get them to switch it. But, you know, I'd have moms out there dropping their kids off. Three cars would get out of the Dogwood Trail and the light would go red. And it'd stay red. And uh, it was a real inconvenience. You had traffic backed up past the fire station. And uh, once I got that light adjusted, moms would go home. But uh, they can do that, and it wouldn't cost anything to try it. They could do that in April, just to see how it worked during Easter. Well, well Easter's, course, April, 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 Easter's April 1st this year. Right. Yeah, but the problem with April is that you don't have the volume of traffic in April that you have in June. So you really wouldn't get a good indication of whether you're solving the problem. Give them a shot. So what are you saying, to just keep it in our back pocket for now or to no, do it right in the place? No, it's something we can try and early, well, I like Peter's idea, don't mess with it till school's out. Yeah, I really don't think you can get a read on it until school's out. It, it's school, you got buses going that way, you got parents coming yeah. from Martin's Point and uh, behind Chevrolet Place back in there, picking up their kids, and if you shut that light off, you're going to inconvenience a lot of parents and we're going to hear back from it, I can tell you that. Well, our priority is for the residents of the town. So if we need to accommodate them by delaying it, like Mr. Rasco said, well, we that's good. Be, we also have to be a good neighbor to the school. Well, talk yes, about, well, I'm talk talking about, about, about our... I'm talking about Saturday and Sunday. I'm talking yes. About I know, but still, if you change that light, they don't change it today and off tomorrow. No, I understand. I understand. So again, are you on board with proceeding on sure. the current plan right now? Sure, but I'd, if we could try that other one too, that wouldn't be a big deal. Maybe that's our backup. Because I, I don't like the idea, I really truly don't like the idea of barrels out in the road. People are just going to go around it. They're going to make the left anyways. Uh, honestly, I don't like that idea. They're going to go around like this and they're going to they're going to sit there in front of it. Now they're protected because there's nobody behind them. And then you get a couple cars that realize you can do it and they're just going to do it. Will the barrels extend on past that um, opening into Southern Shores Landing off of uh, 158? No, they'll just be on 158. They go through Southern Shores Landing. <laughs> they'll be on 158, uh, and, and the person will be able to take a left turn into that, and there'll be a police officer on the shoulder of the road right there. Well, I mean, on 158, there's an access into Southern Shores Landing from right. 158. Oh, I'm sorry. You make hit. Yeah, it, they won't go down that far. Which Same would wheel. That, which it it will not go that far that that distance, which could be a problem with Southern Shores Landing. Yes, they know about this. Uh, that's exactly what I was getting. Yeah. At. So you're going on past the turn lane. What's that? You're going on past the Mark turn lane. When you get back there, Jim. My granddaughter and I are doing lemonade on the corner please, of Juniper. Please, please hold, hold on just for a second. I'm not meaning to be rude and cut you off, but he said something. He said something. <laughs> what, what I'm getting at I'm here is, is that if we put the barrels and have a no left turn there, that may immediately just start shifting that mm -hmm. through Southern Shores Landing, and the ultimate goal would not be achieved because we're going to still have the traffic volumes going up Dogwood. Right. I'm gonna, we'll look at that again with, with DOT to see how far down. I think we, were, we, we looked at it before the turn lane had not started. Um, what we had started after you turned to get into Southern Shores Landing. But I'll talk to DOD, okay. DOT if they can I'm agree sorry. to that. That's all right. We're, we're just going to yeah. set up a toll booth and a lemonade stand down at the corner of, of uh, Chickahawk and, and Trinity. 
And, uh, I'm all for it. We're going to charge $2 for a toll to go through the stop sign. I'd make it funny. I'd make it something, <laughs> something big so we can pay for these roads. I'm paying for a college. <laughs> I've seen kids selling um, lemonade at the intersection of East Dogwood and Lim uh, Hickory. But my point is, they're not going to go through Dogwood. They're coming through Juniper. Yes. They're still going to come. It's just moving them around. Or yep. <laughs> they're going to go on past Juniper and up Highway 12 to, to see to Corpus or Dolphin. Yeah. You get over on Wax Merlin, head north. That's what they're going to do. They do it now. I need a motion to adjourn, gentlemen. So moved. I'll second. Give me a second. Thank you. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.